Well, hey friends and welcome back. Today, I want to take you along as we transform our basic builder bathroom into a beautiful custom space. And in order to fully appreciate any transformation, I feel like you need to start at the beginning. So here's a quick look at the space that we had to work with. Okay, so here's the before. This is what our bathroom looks like right now. And in my opinion, it is basically just the definition of a basic builder bathroom. You've got kind of nothing really special going on giant mirror here, but it doesn't really add any personality to the space. Not huge on the light fixture or these super shiny toilet roll holder and towel holders. And overall, I just feel like this space just doesn't have the design elements that I love in so much of the rest of our house right now. So as I'm sure you can tell, there's been a lot that's gone into taking our bathroom from where it was then to where it is now. And today I want to walk you through that entire process. So with no further to do, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and let's get right to the good stuff, starting with painting our walls and putting up some DIY board and bed. Okay, so getting started, the first step here was just to remove everything from the bathroom so we could start with a blank slate. That way, as we started painting and installing everything, we'd have room to work with. And for this makeover, I had a pretty extensive list of all the changes that I wanted to make in our bathroom. And first step on the list was that I wanted to install some DIY board and batten to help add some character to the room. So we made a quick trip to Home Depot and came home with all of the supplies that we would need for the project. And once we had everything all measured out, Christopher cut the pieces down to size using the saw that we borrowed from a friend. And while he did that, I got to work painting each of the pieces. The color that we decided to go with was Baja by Bear Paints. It's a pretty neutral, kind of taupe beige color that I thought worked really well with a much bolder color that we'd already decided on for the walls. The reason we decided to paint the paneling before hanging it up was just that we figured that it would be easier to touch up the paint once it was already installed rather than try to get into all of the nooks and crannies that we knew we'd encounter once everything was up in the bathroom. Then with everything cut to size and painted, it was time to install it, and this definitely was a bit of a jigsaw puzzle to put together. Christopher really embraced the challenge though and took it head on, and he did such a great job in installing all of this. And the basic process that he followed was that he would first glue each piece one at a time, press it against the right location on the wall, hold it in place for a few seconds, and then hammer in some nails to make sure that everything would stay in place. And so he just went around the room installing all of the paneling first. And then once that was ready to go, he moved on to the trim pieces following a really similar process. Fortunately though, for this part of the process, we had a friend who was actually able to drop off a nail gun for us to borrow and that really sped things up. And so that was really our process for doing this kind of DIY board and batten. Because we are still a bit newer to home projects like this, we really tried to simplify things a bit. So rather than having all of these different wood pieces to deal with, to measure and all of that, we'd really tried to make this project as simple as possible. Using paneling with the vertical grooves already cut into it and trim that all we had to do was to cut it to size. And I think partially because we really did try to keep things so simple, we were able to knock this all out in a single day. Okay, but then once everything was installed and secured, the last thing that we did was to add some caulk to the edges. And the purpose of this is really just to make sure that there wouldn't be any gaps or crevices between the various pieces. So 
good morning friends today we are going to be painting the top section of the bathroom and we're going green so i'm getting ready for a dramatic change in here but before we get started i wanted to share with you guys a little hack that i recently learned for if you're trying to basically create clean lines with your paint so obviously when you're painting a room and you don't want the paint to bleed you can put down tape to prevent that however that isn't always perfect you can literally put the tape down perfectly and sometimes little bits of paint will still bleed causing lines that you end up having to touch up later. But I recently learned a little trick that we're going to try out today that I think is going to completely solve the problem. So what we're going to do is along the edges for our board and batten, we're actually going to paint them the color of the board and batten first. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a seal between the wall and the paint. And then afterwards, once that dries, we'll paint over the wall color on top of that. And you'll see what I mean in a second, but fingers crossed that should create perfectly clean lines that we won't have to go back and touch up later. So I'm excited to see this room really starting to come together. I've got my painting clothes on. I think Christopher is going to help me for this. So let's get to painting. So right here is the first layer and essentially what this is going to do is to create a seal so that when we go and paint the green over top of that, it'll create a nice crisp clean line when we remove the tape. Okay, but now let's get to painting the rest of the room. So I started off just with taking that Baja color and making sure that I brought it along all of the corners of the wall where it touched our paneling. But then once I'd finished that, I got out the color that we'd selected for our walls. This is another color by Bearer called Herb Cornucopia. And I'm just absolutely obsessed with this color. I'm not normally one for really dark, moody colors in rooms, but this one I have really been digging. It has a very natural and almost vintage vibe to it that I think is a perfect statement color for a smaller and more plain room like our guest bathroom. So we took our rollers and basically just started making our way around the room, trying to coat the main sections of the room. Okay, so we've got the first coat of paint pretty much done and we've given this base layer a couple of hours to dry. So now I'm going to paint over our tan with the green so that we can create that nice crisp clean line. Okay, so after day one of painting, here's what everything looks like. It's still drying, but it's already looking so good in here. Now tomorrow, we're definitely going to want to go in and do a second coat of paint. You can see there's some areas where the paint just isn't quite thick enough, so want to do a second coat. But I'm really starting to see the vision for this room come together. I love the taupe color with the green. I feel like those look amazing. And as you can see, I changed because I'm about to go out, but we're going to give this 24 hours to dry. We'll come back tomorrow and finish this up. Okay, so it's now a few days later. Time got away from us for a little bit there, but it's time to apply the second coat of paint. So this is what it looks like before, and here's the after. Once the second coat of paint had dried, Christopher began installing some new hardware for us, starting with a new light fixture. And we ended up deciding on a light that was a similar style to our previous one, but that we felt looked a lot more elevated. And personally, I am just in love with that combination of the brushed gold with the green. And we also swapped out our sink faucet and taps, again, installing brushed gold ones, and I just love the character that they add to this space. Okay, the second coat of paint is now on, and now comes my favorite part of this makeover process, and that's removing the tape. There's something about it that's so satisfying, it just makes my soul happy. Christopher, you excited? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very excited. This is the best part of painting. I think that he might enjoy this as much, honestly, if not more than I do. Okay. 
Okay, so let's get started with the curtain rod and just look at this color. I feel like the gold with the green just goes so perfectly. But I was just reading the instructions and I think that all we need to do is to twist this out to the right level and we can hang it up. That was pretty easy. Okay, so I just put up the curtain and I like how it looks, but it is pretty wrinkly. So I think what I'm going to do is just to take my iron, iron out some of the creases a little bit. I think that'll make it look a lot better. Okay, and for some reason, I think my camera just accidentally deleted the clip where I showed you the mirror that we were going to install, but I found this beautiful arched gold mirror at Home Goods that was the perfect size for our bathroom. I will say it was a bit tricky to install, but eventually we got the hang of it. When the mirror's up, that is another thing checked off of our list. Now after a short break, we continued on with our next project, which is switching out all of the hardware in our bathroom. So the first thing that we did was install a towel ring since the house hadn't actually come with one. And I did take a bit of playing around with just to make sure that we got the height of it right, but we did test it with an actual hand towel in place, which helped a lot. Just look at this little corner all coming together. Oh, it's making me so happy. Obviously this is But then next, the other big piece of hardware that we installed was a new toilet roll holder. And this might seem like a small thing, but it was particularly satisfying for me because I've always just loathed the shiny silver one we had in there before. And ever since we first decided to embark on this project, one thing that I knew that I wanted to add to this bathroom was a set of floating shelves. And my thought was that they would be a perfect solution for holding a handful of essentials, as well as just incorporating an element of decor. We went back and forth a bit on where exactly we wanted them, but we decided to install them on the wall across from the toilet with some towel hooks underneath them. And once we made our decisions and measured everything out, Christopher got to installing them, and they actually ended up being pretty easy to put together. They slid on really easily, and I think altogether this project only took about 30 minutes. But then once the shelves were up, Christopher installed the shower hooks for us and we ended up deciding to put three in just so that visually the space would feel filled out while not being overcrowded. And the hooks that we used here were just the ones that came with our bathroom hardware set. Aesthetically, they're pretty simple, but I love how they just help give a very clean look to the room. Okay, well it is now several days later, I'm not gonna lie, this was one of those projects where I got almost to the finish line and then just got distracted with other things that have come up. But I'm super excited because today's the day where we get to put those all important finishing touches in this room. I want to decorate our floating shelves, put some art on the walls, and then also just make sure that this space is ready to host guests. We have some friends coming to stay with us in just a few days, so I want to make sure the place looks amazing for them. And I think I want to start with filling the shelves first. Let's begin with that and go from there. And for the shelves, I just began by adding a few fun decor pieces like this embroidery piece that I did a few years back and some dried florals. But I also tried to include some practical things too, like some backup rolls of toilet paper for guests and some emergency feminine products. As someone who's been caught asking for these in a pinch in the past, it's just something that I always like to have on hand in case someone needs it.
And then with the shelves decorated, I moved on to the rest of the bathroom. The first thing that I put in was this really cool piece of driftwood that I found at the thrift store. It's such a cool shape and I feel like the color and texture of it just work perfectly in the space. And then another fun thrift find for this room was this really interesting jar. I love the lid on it. I just filled it with a couple of bath bombs and my thought was either our guests could use these or since this room does have our only tub in the house, I might take advantage of them as well. Then I just added a few other natural touches to the rest of our sink. Then finally, I put in this cool soap dispenser and just filling it with the soap that we'd previously been using in this room. Then just a couple other things. I added in this cute green trash can and a bath mat since we hadn't had one in here before. Okay, but then with all of the decor and practical items in place, I got out all of the images that I wanted to display on our walls. And adding some artwork to our walls was something that I knew that I wanted to do just to really give personality to the space and to kind of round it out. So over the course of a couple months, I hunted down some really beautiful frames and artwork from different thrift stores and off of Etsy. And I really tried to focus on finding a variety of frames all in a similar color palette. I wanted each one to look and feel unique while still feeling like as a group in combination the frames would be visually cohesive. So just one by one I installed all of my artwork in the various frames I'd selected. then as for the artwork, if you've watched my channel a lot in the past, you probably know that Christopher and I love displaying pieces of our art in our own home. We have several watercolors and oil paintings that we've done on display throughout our house, but in this room, I did decide to go a bit of a different route. At this point at least, we don't really have a large collection of pictures that all go well with each other, and so what I decided to do as an alternative was to go on Etsy and find a collection of different images that I liked and felt all complemented and went well with each other. Then I just got all the pictures printed out at our local CVS, and they were ready to go in less than 24 hours. And I will say, I think at some point in the future it would be really cool to swap out the images in these frames for ones that Christopher and I have painted ourselves, but that's going to take some significant time. It could easily be a year or more. And so I really think that this is the perfect solution in the interim. Okay, got all the pictures prepped and ready to go up. Let's start putting them in. And as you can probably tell from watching these clips, I do do a bit of measuring, but I'm nowhere near as precise as Christopher with this kind of thing. And I tend to just eyeball the way I hang things up. Fortunately, it did work pretty well for me in this instance as I put together our little mini gallery wall. But if you want more precise results, I would absolutely recommend measuring this all out a little bit more precisely than I did. All right, well the bathroom is now complete and I am just over the moon with how this project turned out. It looks so good in here and I can't wait to take you guys on a tour. Before I do though, as a quick reminder, here's what our bathroom looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. And that was just a little sneak peek, but now let me walk you through it. Okay, so here's the view of the bathroom when you first walk in, hey, right here. So first off, we did update a lot of the pictures in the picture frames. I really love how we were able to find a lot of cool thrifted and vintage frames. I think that adds just a lot of charm to this room. We also updated all of the hardware to gold, and I think it looks just amazing with the green wall, contrasts so well. 
I'm also a big fan of all of the dried florals we use throughout here and this tap is just so cool. I love the vintage vibes in here. Okay, and then moving over here, I'm a big fan of this piece of driftwood. Found that at the thrift store. I think it just adds a really cool element to this space. And then moving up, we have our little mini gallery wall. I think it's great how all the pictures just kind of complement each other well. And they work great in the space. Then over here, we have our shower curtain. We added a bath mat, a little trash can here, like the little pop of color in the green. And then we have some towels for guests right here. And then on our shelves over here, we just have a little picture frame, a candle, this embroidery piece that I did a couple of years ago. And we have a little shadow box with some dried florals from a wedding that Christopher was in recently, but I thought they worked really well in the space. We have some bunny tails, more dried florals, and then in here I have some feminine supplies just for guests in case they run out and then some toilet paper. Oh, and then actually in this drawer too, we do have a few extra supplies for guests. I just like having a few things like that on hand in case somebody forgets something. All right, well, that's it for this bathroom makeover, but I really hope that you enjoyed coming along with me for this process. I know I at least had fun and I hope that you did too. But now I would love to know, what is your favorite part of this makeover? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, friends, I am wishing you all an incredible day and I'll see you in the next one.